this is Nick from Income Digs with a video tutorial. We're talking about QuickBooks Online, and we're going to go over a very important topic, owner's equity. And this is coming from probably the most common question I'm getting these days from students of our course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. And that is, how do we deal with contributions we personally make to our business and draws that we take from our business? Okay, so in a real estate business, or really any business, we are probably injecting some cash into that business at some point in time, probably in the beginning, okay? Certainly throughout as well, and then we're taking draws as well. So how do we record those in QuickBooks? What's the right way? Especially when we have a little bit of commingling going on where we're using our personal funds to make business expenses here and there. We're gonna talk about some strategies to do that. So join me here in QuickBooks Online. We're gonna get right into it. First thing to talk about is what is it when you invest money into your business? The answer to that is it's equity. Okay, so when you put money into your business, let's say you were to start a new business tomorrow and you put $5,000 in, you, you take $5,000 of your own money, you put it into the business. What is that on a balance sheet? That's what we call equity. So let's start there. I'm going to go to a balance sheet. Now I'm recording this in 2021. I'm going to pull up a balance sheet as of 2019 in the sample set of books because it's completely empty. Okay, so I want to start that business, right? I want to inject some cash into it. So the first thing we got to think about is does our chart of accounts have a place for us to put that in investment? Okay. Now, if you're on QuickBooks Online, they're probably giving you, at least to start, some kind of owner's equity account. Let's take a look at that and make sure it's something that works for you. As I look at my setup here, I have owner's contributions and distributions. It's an owner's equity account. And you can see that I actually have two sub-accounts below it. So for those of you out there who have multiple business partners, it might make sense to track how much each partner is contributing and taking out for themselves, okay? And, that, and that's what I'm gonna do in this demo right here. So I have owner's contributions and distributions, that's an owner's equity account. I actually adjusted, I edited the name that QuickBooks gave me by default to be exactly what it is there, okay? And then I have two sub accounts. So that's what we're gonna use for this equity. So if I go to my balance sheet as of 2019 again, there's nothing there. So we're envisioning that this business doesn't even exist yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a journal entry for that initial cash infusion. Now, it doesn't have to be a journal entry, but that's a, an easy way to demonstrate. All right, so I'm going to make this transaction as of a date in 2019 so that it shows up on my 2019 balance sheet. So what happens when we invest money into the business? So we write a check for the business. So, okay, so the business checking account, the business bank account is getting those funds. So the first thing we do here is we pull up the business bank account, okay, which is an asset for the business, is getting that $5,000 investment, all right? We can just say cash from owner's investment. All right. And now where did that money come from? I didn't make it from revenue. It's not income. Okay. I didn't get a refund for something I had purchased before. It's simply an owner contribution. So I'm going to use my owner contribution distributions. And in this case, Nick, me, I made that contribution. Okay. Now I'm going to leave business in class blank for now. That's a that's a separate topic. We have different videos on tracking location, tracking classes. Right now, we're just talking about owner's equity. So if I were to save and close this transaction, what I'd like to see on my balance sheet is, one, I want to see cash in my bank account. Okay, there it is right there, the $5,000. And then equity, okay, right there. So again, what is equity, really? Equity is is ownership, okay? So, you know, there's different ways to make equity. One is to just give the business equity. I'm giving it cash, I'm giving it equity. Another is to make profit, right? And that's the more natural way. That's why the business exists, is to make profit. That profit goes to net income, retained earnings, that's equity as well. But one way we can add equity up front when the business is just getting started is by contributing our own capital, okay? So that's what we've just done right there. Now, what if that $5,000 was split between two owners, right? So in this case, let's say that 2,500, actually let's say 3,000 came from me and maybe 3,000, or I'm sorry, 2,000 came from my partner, Wendy, okay? And if I save and close that, this is kind of why you might want to have those sub accounts if you have multiple owners. I'll just hit the back button and look at my report here. Still 5,000 in cash. There I see 3,000 in Nick, 2,000 from Wendy. And over time, this account is going to change. As I invest more, it's going to go up. What if I were to uh, get a draw, it would go down. Now, I just did a journal entry. We can record those transactions in other ways as well. From the banking feed, you can indicate a deposit as an owner's investment, or we can do a deposit ourselves just by going to a new bank deposit. So just like I did with the journal entry, 
here I'm going to say that to the bank account I'm getting funds, again, as of 2019 sometime, just, just so I can demonstrate it on that balance sheet. And it's going to come from my owner's contributions, distributions account, additional capital, maybe it's for the purchase of a property. Okay, and maybe it's another 10000 Okay, we'll save and close that. Whoops. All right, so now, looking at my balance sheet, I got $15,000 in cash, and you can see I have $13,000 from Nick, $2,000 from Wendy. All right, now another way that we can deal with this owner's investment is when we close on a property, and this is very, very common. Let's say that we're buying a property, and there's cash to it closing, and it's not coming from our business account. Maybe, again, our business account's just getting started. We don't have that cash yet. Maybe we personally took out a, a line of credit, okay, that we're not going to track in the business, but we want to indicate that the money came from us personally. So what would that look like if we were to have a property on our sheet, our balance sheet? So let's say that we make a purchase of a property. Now I have other videos on this as well, but when you do that, you're going to split it up between land, building, and then closing costs. So your total purchase is going to go into those categories. Okay, so let's say that I bought a property for $85,000, 10000 of which was land. 75,000 of it was building, and then let's say I have 3,500 in closing costs. Now, so a total 88.5. Let's say that I got a mortgage, a conventional loan, okay, for 80,000, okay? That means that I need to come to the table with $8,500 in cash, okay? Now, let's say that my business bank account only has like $2,000 in it. Okay, so my business bank account's coming to the table with $2,000. I'm short, right? I still need some cash. That money can come from a personal check, and we account for it with that same owner's investment contributions distributions, okay? Save and close that. Now, what I'm, I want to see here is I want to see a building on my balance sheet, okay? There's my building, there's my land, my fixed assets are there. I used 2000 of my bank account money, and I have a loan, and I have a contribution from Nick, okay? So you can see how this all starts to flow together. This is me injecting funds into my business. What happens when I take money out of my business? Let's say that I take some of this $13,000 and I distribute it. Well, pretty much the reverse, right? So just like we did with that um, contribution, in this case, if the bank account is going to be losing some money, 3,000 for example, where did it go? Well, it went to Nick, we're paying him back a little bit, okay? And that one equity account is going to continue to track the positive and negative income, uh, not income, the positive and negative infusions and distributions. Okay, so if I were to drill down on that, you can see that it's going up, it's going down, it's going up over time. So that owner's equity account is a great way for you to understand how much money you are personally putting into your business or that your other partners are putting into the business. All right, so that's kind of the easy way to do it. But what happens when we use our personal card, let's say our personal bank card or our personal credit card, to incur expenses for the business? Let's say that we are paying the utilities with our own card, or, or we're, we're at Lowe's, we're at Home Depot, and we, we forgot our business cards, we use our personal card. How do we deal with that? Well, one way to do it, similar, is using a journal entry. You know, you could just say the date of the transaction, and instead of our bank account, now it's whatever that cost of goods sold is, whatever that expense is. So let's say it's like repairs for a rental property we own. So I have my repairs and maintenance. So instead of the bank account getting the money, instead now I'm doing repairs and maintenance. And let's say that 152.65 is what I spent at Lowe's. Let me put the name right here. And where did that money come from? It didn't come from my credit card with the business. It didn't come from my business bank account, it came from me personally, I used my own card for it, owners, contributions, and distributions, okay? And so this will, instead of this going onto my balance sheet, well, it will go onto my balance sheet, but in the form of net income. So right here, we see that I was able to spend money, and where did that money come from? I actually did it reverse, I apologize. Okay, let's, let's reverse that. So I did a, a more like a refund, okay? So my debits and credits would be reversed. I didn't do that. Okay, so if I'm incurring those repairs and maintenance, I would be debiting the 152.65, and therefore I'm crediting right there, all right? So it would be a, an, an expense, okay? 
Now, that's a good way to do it. However, that can get a little bit tedious, especially if you have a lot of those transactions. Now, one thing I'll warn against is I don't think it's a good idea to link your personal banking account to your banking fee. The reason for that is that the balances will never match. It's not like you're bringing in your personal expenses in total, right? You don't want to have expenses that are not business related into your books and therefore linking it is going to get a little bit too convoluted, right? So I don't think linking is a great idea. However, if you do incur a lot of these and the journal entry is a little bit too cumbersome and or you want to make use of products and services, then we're going to need something else. And what I mean by that is like if I wanted to go and say I incur an expense and I, I like to use the expense because it's like quicker, right? It's a little bit quicker than a journal entry. Also, I have my items down here, which I don't have on a journal entry. So I can kind of do that. Let's say that I spend money on like rough electrical, but I want to say that my payment account is my owner's equity. You're not able to do that. It's not going to let you do an owner's equity account as your payment account. So we have this little workaround that we've been teaching where we actually make a, like a phantom, a phantom personal checking account, all right? So all we do is we go to our chart of accounts and we do new bank checking account. Now this is not going to actually be a checking account that our business owns, but we're gonna call this personal spending. Okay, save and close that. So now I have this checking account here called personal spending. Now, it's, again, it's not a real account, but what I'm doing is I'm gonna stash my owner investment here for a little bit of time, probably throughout the year, let it build up, and then make my journal entry at the end. That allows for me to be a little bit quicker throughout the year in indicating, all right, I used my personal card to make this purchase, and I can let that build up and then journal it over. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So if I go to my balance sheet, that personal card doesn't show up here yet because I didn't do anything with it. But let's just say that we make a purchase. Again, let's say it's like to Lowe's. Okay, and instead of using a business credit card, instead I'm gonna do my personal spending bank account. And here I'm gonna say repairs and maintenance and 162.53. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. Get that out of there. And I'm gonna save and close this, okay? So what I should see here is instead of money going into my owner's investment, contributions and distribution, it shows as negative to my personal spending bank account, okay? And then my net income is reflected properly, okay? Another benefit of doing that is let's say that we have, we wanna use our products or services, right? So I have those items down here. So like I could do rough electric from personal spending. So I could pull up rough electrical all right, 2,500, I think this is gonna go, I'm not sure if this is gonna to go to my capital improvements or my cost of goods sold, let's see. Looks like it went to my cost of goods sold, which is fine. Okay, so if I pull up my net income now, there's my rehab costs, okay? Again, if you have questions about whether it should go to cost of goods sold or your, your fixed assets, we have separate videos on that, that's not what we're talking about. But what I really wanna focus on is look at this negative 2662.53. So what's gonna happen is you just let that build up throughout the year. We're not wasting time making all these equity journal entries, right? That kind of are cumbersome and take a lot of time. However, at the end of the year, you're gonna do exactly that. This personal spending account is not real, right? It's not something that our business owns. It doesn't actually exist. We're just using it to track how much of my personal card did I use in my business this year. Now this can also be a combination of your personal bank account, your personal credit card account, I don't want you to create separate one for each different card. That doesn't really make sense. We're gonna over complicate things. So we have one account to track any of that bank transaction stuff, any of the credit card transaction stuff within QuickBooks. And all we do at the end of the year is we take what is the balance of this account at the end of the year and we transfer it over to owner's equity. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of this just because I have a bad short-term memory and I'm gonna sit Put it on my other screen here. So here I have 2662.53. That's the current balance of my personal spending account. By the end of the year, when I prep for taxes, I want to hand this balance sheet off to my accountant. I want to have zero there because they're going to look at this and say, what the heck? How do you have a bank account with a negative balance? It doesn't make any sense. What is that? We want it to be zero. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is at the end of the year, and this date of this is going to be exactly at the end of the year. So again, I'm in 2019, so 1231, 2019. We're going to use that exact personal spending account, and it's currently at negative 266253. We want it to be zero, so we're going to debit it. Okay, and we're just going to say reconcile personal spending. Okay, and then the account that we're going to offset that with is exactly our owner's equity and contributions. All right, save and close. And what I want to see now is I want to see that personal bank account go down to zero. Zero, perfect. And it goes into owner's contributions. So what we're doing is we're letting the year play out with that account that just accumulates, accumulates spending, if you will. And then we zero it out at the end of the year. If we were to hand this to our accountant, we could even go as far as saying, instead of just active rows, I want non-zero rows. And we'd see that personal spending account go completely away. Okay? So this is a cool little trick to allow you to, to deal with these a little bit more. Don't be afraid of equity accounts. It's very common for us to invest money into our business and to take money out. Okay? If we were to write a draw to ourselves, right? Or if we were to spend money on ourselves in, in the form of a draw, we could say that the money is coming from our bank account. And the category is owner's investment contributions, $1,500 for whatever reason, okay? We're saving close that, and basically what we're doing there is the money goes, it goes down, all right? So we're gonna have positives and negatives in these accounts. It's okay for them to not be equal, even if we are 50-50 partners. It makes sense over time that somebody's going to have invested more or less. Based on your partnership agreement, that's okay. The idea is we just want to have it tracked so that if we get to a point where a partner is leaving or we need to pay a partner out, we know where everybody stands, okay? So don't be afraid of these equity accounts. They're very, very important. We all use them, especially as we're just getting our businesses going, we're taking on partners, we're investing our own capital in some form into our business, all right? So we talk about this exact topic and so many more in, in very great detail in our end-to-end -end course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We just relaunched with Reeb 2.0, the reboot. Check it out at IncomeDigs.com forward slash Reeb. We'd love to have you in the course. We do uh, live Q&A sessions every month as well. The students have had really, really great feedback, all right? If you have any questions about the course, throw them in the comments right here. If you have any questions about this specific topic, throw them in the comments as well, and I will answer them. Until next time, check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com. We'll see you on the next video.